What is good? We're back. Nice crack of a of a hotel rendezvous from Revelry Brewing Company. How you doing, Matt? You all right? I am doing well. A little little cider, a little Perrier. Yeah, it's a, it's a fancy sparkling water with mm. blackberry and pomegranate mm. sprite without the syrup. Get rid of it. <laughs> what are we doing? All right, are we finally doing it. Yeah, we're gonna get into a little uh, prospect talk. We're gonna start with some receivers. <gasps> Run through uh, five or six of these, and we'll switch to running backs, do five or six of those, and then decide where to go from there. Um, Doing a little kicker talk? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it is amazing how there is not more good kickers. I don't understand how. <laughs> Ooh, <we> yeah. Could... <laughs> yeah. Shout ask... out to Dallas. Yeah. Shout out to, to, to Brent Maher. We have... More so just talking, since we're talking college, I was more so the college game. Like, how, I don't understand oh my how, God. Like, how are college hard, kickers Casey, are it's terrible. Hard. Like, there, yeah. there's not better kick. I don't understand yeah. it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Hashtag college kickers. Yeah. Wild. Uh, I guess they don't probably sink a whole lot of money into scouting those. Uh, well, there's a whole maybe. separate scouting service for kickers. Oh, my God. So many people have tuned out. <laughs> Well, I promise we're going to talk about somebody today, guys. Uh, next don't. next week, we're going to do a little long snapper talk. Yeah, that's now we're talking. Getting yeah. right into the meat and potato things. Chris okay. Stoll. Got that's, long, all, that's a whole all of a package. Chris Stoll won the long snapper award. Long snapper from Penn State. Going, mm. going at the Hula Bowl this Imagine year. Imagine that. He knew who the... Because he won, won to Penn State. Did your long... What did Clemson's long snapper do? I think that's Rex Ryan's son. Is it? It was. Oh, all right. He's got a soft spot How does he feel Clemson? about feet? He does. <laughs> yeah. All right, so today, don't worry, I'll cut all that out. We are gonna, we are gonna hit. Don't you dare! We are gonna hit Zay. Give me my flowers. What do you guys think? Say my name. Say my name. I'm pretty excited about mm. this one. I really enjoy uh, what Zay brings to the table here. How um, could you not? The, How could you not like what Zay Flowers be, brings to the table? Gonna be a little old heading in though. Um, he did come back. He did come back. Yeah, he's an old head. Yeah, he's he's an old head. <laughs> I believe 20- came back to Boston College, turned down 600k to not leave Boston but, College. But from where is what I would like to know. He didn't disclose that. He also had a 300k offer. But real quick aside, have you guys seen that shit going down to Florida right now? Yeah, it's pretty. Oh wild. my god, that pretty is wild. wild. Pretty. I have wild. not, but don't tell me about it right now. <laughs> Stay on track, Zay Flowers. I'll tell you, afterwards. stud, crazy. So hit me in the comments. Yeah, go ahead. Hit, hit me with you know he's gonna be he's 22. He's a little older going to be i believe 23 when the season starts or somewhere around there born in the 2000s uh, yeah 9 11 birthday that's about Oof. Uh, so what an awful birthday i yeah. text my buddy who has a birthday on 9 11 every year i said what a terrible day this is shout out to the penyak twins they got birthdays on 9 11 twins so uh penyak yeah so tough tough day um but 5 11 178 he's from fort lauderdale uh three-star recruit um Projected you know. around four three seven. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. You don't think so? No, he's pretty no, fast. No, that's that's looks that's, pretty fast. That's really fast. He yeah, looks pretty is, fast. He's fast. But I don't four know three seven fast. is fucking flying. Though. Yeah. So anywhere in the four fours. What kind of uh, career stats and metrics do we have here? Well, the metrics. We'll just go ahead and get those out of the way. We'll give the people what they want. Dominator in the seventy third percentile. Breakout age in the sixty second percentile. Even though to being a little bit old. Uh, yards per reception in the 78th percentile. A dot, not as good, but above 10. Uh, the target share, I never know what to do with target share. Do you take it from his best year? Do you take it over his career? Uh, it's fucking good. No matter which one you want to take, it's like 83rd percentile or better, depending on what site you're looking at. So crushing metrics. Can't see the analytical crowd being at all mad at him. Size 178 is the only thing to me. If you could be mad, and about. he didn't have to come back to get the breakout, you know, fourth year wide receiver. But I think right. I, I think broke out fourth, at age twenty. Though, right. I think so. the fourth year wide receiver stuff is going to be a bit is going to be a bit of a moot point because of the COVID year. Uh, yeah, we're going to get the it's oldest a, class we've had in a, in a minute I here. Think the next two um, years, are I think it's the, a moot point, irregardless. Eh. Regardless. <laughs> irregardless. I like the early come out. Like yeah, because no one that went four years has ever been any good. I'm like, not. I'm, I'm just saying. I just hate the narrative. You hate any narrative ever, and yeah. it probably takes us longer to get through an episode of you hating on narratives than me and Matt talking about long snappers. Hey, well, at least it's relevant to the topic. Uh, what was this? What's, what's give me a little bio background? Because as we, as we get a little further down this line of of you know sort of 
doing this picking reviewing, the guy to reviewing prospects really get behind character um, becomes a big thing yeah right? well, well the longer that i do it it's like you know that's that's something that it's and some guys it's harder to figure out than others this this guy's got a lot of you know positives right. and it's kind of out there a little bit some guys are a little harder to you know kind of got to read between the lines of some stuff and and you just don't know but like it really comes down to me uh, you know how good you want to be in a pro for a lot of guys is is how good how how good do you want to be as a pro are you just going to go there and rely on you know your god-given athleticism or, or are you going to work and do you want to be great and it seems like this guy's got some of, of the the traits that would lean towards i'm not just going to go there and rest on my maybe four three speed and and nice fluidity um I, you know I, I do have some good character qualities right yeah i mean this dude it's it's easy to find right uh one of the big things being that he did turn down that money which we already spoke of to, to stay at boston college and be loyal to them his dad wanted him to stay get his degree put a big emphasis on being like the first college graduate of his family which he's one of 14 children he's the fourth youngest he wears his number four because of that uh big competitive family uh, mom passed away when he was young dad raised the whole thing allegedly lives in the weight room in the film room uh, put on a, a decent amount of weight from coming in at 170s up to 178. I'd, I'd argue that 170 might have been a little bit inf inflated to begin with. Multi-year team captain, you know, great interview. They ask him about, hey, the coach wants to get you way more touches this year. How do you feel about that? Oh, I'll take all the touches I can get, but we got a lot of other good guys. We need to get him involved in this guy and just paying homage to everybody. Like, he's just a class act, like just a fucking good dude, works hard loyal family oriented loyal what more could you want <laughs> following your dreams yeah i mean he, he off got offered money like you said to play other places and then and, and came back he said he didn't like he said I, I didn't enter the transfer portal why are they coming after me trying to poach good players from schools that can't pay that money and it's like well because they can and if you wanted to go get that money i would not be mad at you at all i'm very surprised that he didn't i fucking would have taken the money he's got 14 you know, 13 brothers and sisters, like they 600 grand could change your life. But he's like the degree meant more and being loyal there. I'm sure he got some money from Boston college and now he's about to be, go be a decent draft day pick. Like it's going to yeah. get paid. So, yeah. And right. if we go ahead and look at the career stats, he, he definitely improved the final year, you know, totaling yeah. 347 targets over his career, 199 receptions over 3000 yards, average 15.4 yards a catch, 29 total touchdowns, Drops, you know, everybody has them. That's one of the knocks. A little bit of concentration drops here and there. The yak is fucking fantastic. Average 6.8 yards yak per reception. Back, real 40 quick missed the, real quick forced tackles. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot that... It stinks. It's something that you got to clean up. But like Justin Jefferson, mm -hmm. I think, has led or, or had yeah. the double-digit drops maybe even in his first, in his last two years of play in the receiver position now Matt's you got an look older on his face said it all he said if you got an older curmudgeon quarterback like Aaron Rodgers maybe it can matter but for the most part it is not going to really matter I mean, if you're really matter, good I mean did it really matter Rodgers I mean look no, Christian, look at Christian no. Watson wide open on the first fucking play of the season drops it surefire 75 right. touchdown then it was getting peppered late well, in the season but it so. took a while well he, he was also hurt. injured was as well mad. too and then, it, and then it did cool off at the end there a little bit but he's a rookie and he was yeah, let the and, world on fire. But no, sure. you you are mostly correct. I'm just saying that's like that might be the one spot that it may matter. The rest of the, I don't. Kirk Cousins certainly doesn't give a shit that Justin Jefferson is dropping the football. He's going right back to him. Yeah. Um. So anyway. Yeah, I mean, and then the last thing I would add is that he's a pretty versatile guy. You know, spent 65 percent of the time in out wide and another 33 percent in the slot. I think he can do whatever you want. So yeah, those, that would wrap those up those numbers, career stats there. Those numbers, um, you know, moved around a little bit. You know, he was sure he was out wide. You know, portions of his career a little more, and inside and portions and right, you know, and then, kind of fluctuated throughout each year. Right, and then and then in that last year, it kind of evened out more to two to one. Yeah, which is representative of that career average. Right, more out wide uh, on that final year. It was out um, wide a ton his freshman year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then kind of moved back in a little bit, and then out out wide to to, to end it. Um, uh, you know, you mentioned the A dot only being at at uh, ten point four or whatever. You know, that was a, that's for a career. No, no ten that's, point that's four was this senior year. Was okay, year. thirteen point that, one for the career. It was the lowest it had been for for this whole mm -hmm. you know, for his whole career this year. It was fifteen point two, fourteen point four, thirteen point four. I think that um, was a bit of, of a design by the Boston College offense to get the ball in his hands as quickly as possible. Right, and and you read off those career stats, and he he is he did break the school record 
for you know any receiving stat that that really matters receptions uh reception yards and touchdowns i mean he he absolutely was a monster through there and played through a few car- different carousels of quarterbacks mm-hmm. you know so you know yeah what, the main what he guy was doing broke his wrist early in the season i think it's just all throughout his and, career it seemed like you know if you're watching different games there's di- there's different numbers mm-hmm. three or four times throughout the film that you're yeah, watching but it's all the same i mean uh what's this the uh uh, Jezelnik it's not him, but yeah um, Dracovic is is decent like he yeah it, Zay definitely looks the best when he's out there operating uh the offense um yeah the guy from the junior year was not great yeah I don't know which which one was where but um you know the what other you see on film from this guy well you ready to get into that? yeah no I don't think so We're the, gonna move on. the the, the, the height a little the bit. height weight and the age may be some of the knock kind of moving in in into getting him into what we like about him but like when he's 5'10 172 on PFF you you I think player profile might have had him at like 178 511 yeah. or something he along came, those he lines. came in on according to 247 sports or 247 sports it was 511 247 511 it's 24/7 right that's what right. it's 247 it's, it's about slash. though there's no slash I didn't say 24/7 slash. Slash I mean you can't put a slash in in www but Maybe their logo has this on the website. It's just two four seven. Hmm. Anyhow, irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> Your Honor, the fact that my client has been ridden more than Seattle slew is irrelevant. You were right. I don't know if he's five ten or five eleven. I go, don't give a fuck. This dude plays bigger than his size. If you look at him on tape, he doesn't look he doesn't, small. He do, yeah, he doesn't look as he doesn't look five ten. Once he doesn't look slight out there playing. Like he, it's not like he doesn't look like uh, Devonta Smith out there. Where he visibly looks like a the skinnier, slim, slimmer, slim guy. Not you know, obviously he's doing his thing in there, but a couple inches taller. It doesn't. I, I'm with you where it doesn't really concern me the height, weight because it doesn't. It doesn't affect his play style at all, um, and he doesn't look like small out there. So I think he looks a little slight, but I I, mm. I don't think in today's NFL it matters that oh, much. Oh, it certainly anymore. doesn't. I don't. I really don't think it does. We don't need. We you don't need those six foot four, two hundred and twenty pound nice. wide receivers. Yeah, they're great to have, but I mean, in today's NFL, it's about creating separation and being able to and being able to play with the ball in your hands. And I, I think this guy exhibits modern day NFL all over him. Um, he can play inside and out. Yeah, he's you know he is he's. I don't think he's that small. He doesn't look that small. He doesn't play small. He's very fluid i think he plays um, bigger than what he is yeah um he's, he's very fluid in in all of his movements and you can kind of you know movement there's a lot great of great movement a lot of different things you can do with this guy like i said you can play him in or out any any move that he's putting that he's that he's putting a double move of sorts on somebody like it's it's lights out like he's he's gonna get you um and yeah i mean crushing the whip you, route the you, change of direction right. is i mean i would say either borderline elite or is elite i don't know which one you want to go yeah, with that's good it's fucking phenomenal, right? Right, uh, and and you know the curls are good, and the the down the field stuff is good. The contested catches are pretty good, even though there are some drops there. I think there's going to be plenty Caught. of guys with a lot of drops. Great yeah. around the sideline too. Yeah, he some a couple of minutes in the same game in the in back to back games that I saw where he's just even toe tapping both and, feet in the college. Right, right. Very good body control. You can mm, literally yep. run him across the field at, at three different <laughs> levels. Right. Play yeah. after play after play that and he would get open. crossing yeah. route. Um, He'll be great in motion in the NFL. Yeah, I, I think that's what I'm saying. Like, I just, I really think this guy fits into the modern day league. Get really this guy well. up in Canada where they can, where they can <laughs> have the guy going towards the line of scrimmage uh, pre-snap. He'd be gone. Yeah, no, I I think there's, you know, the, the yak is really good. Oh, the yak is fucking, he's a nomination for yak king. I mean, so far, out of all the profiles we've done, he's the be- best at the yak. Like, he's out there yakking it up, making dudes look silly. Yeah, he's got 500, five, change direction. 503 uh, yak yards. That was This is the 2022 stats. Um, that's 10th overall with a 20% filter. Um, through via PFF is yak per reception 6.4. That's good for 17th. Um, I think those all those things show up in the game that we're seeing. Missed tackles force 15, uh, tied for 20th there. Um, again, you know he can get you down the field in, in one play, or you can throw little bubbles and little crossers and little comebacks, and he's gonna make more of that. Um, yeah, 
than than just what was thrown to him. Yeah, I mean, really, overall, crushed twenty two. You mentioned the yards, the yak per reception at seven, being ranked seventeenth. That's with being uh, sixth in targets with one hundred twenty four yeah. and tenth in receptions, seventy eight, tied for third in touchdowns. Which you you kind of said it was you know maybe the A dot being down was kind of deliberate this year, and I think that's you know pans out in the target amounts is but you know 124 is you know by far the most he had is 21 more than any other year so you know that's naturally going to drag down your a dot a little bit um, but all the other ones were were really good so i think that's a you know a, a, a fair assessment good assessment by you uh, a little earlier there i think they might have changed offensive coordinators but i'm just i want to look go for yeah, it. yeah he did they just they did that's exactly what happened they changed offensive coordinators from in 2022. Got got a little bit different usage out of. Uh, Guess where the offensive coordinator went to college? Where? Penn State. Penn State. <laughs> you better drink. Um, but the the it's yards getting movement yards per route run 2.2244th. Not great, but not not awful. Um, contested catches. Uh, contested catch targets 12 contested catches seven uh, both pretty good numbers that's pretty good numbers for a guy 5 10 and 175 pounds. right, right. And, and it's knocked for his lack of vertical jumping ability but i mean he goes up and makes some crazy catches in in, in tight quarters and some balls you wouldn't think he's about to come up with right just well, he, he just bitch. seems to track it well and not really get sure. distracted by body parts kind of flying in and out he will drop a dumb one and then he'll catch one in, in double coverage mm-hmm. yeah through two arms um yeah and and being smaller, he does get bodied at times, but then there's a lot of examples of him beating tight man coverage and taking the contact and fighting through it. And yeah, he does a really good job at times uh, really getting really being physical at at the top of his at the top of his route. And he's a dog at times in the blocking game. He was really strong with that in 2022. He gets after it, man. Yeah. He's fucking putting Again, in work to block. he plays bigger than what he is. Sometimes and he gets handled in blocking, but at 178 pounds, that's going to happen. Sure. But the will is definitely there. And when this man's life becomes about nothing but football, and because he was a good student athlete and did put emphasis on getting his degree, sure. now he's going to go pro. He's going to have nothing to do but watch film in the weight room. And I, I guarantee you he's going to be bigger than 178 coming into the nfl like he's gonna be like putting on some well i don't know how big year. you i don't yeah yeah i mean you, you question how big these guys are gonna get for the combine right they want to it's, fast it's depending possible. on what you what you do but i mean i would right. just, i almost said i bet he comes in at 185 at the combine but i could see him coming in at 178 180 just to try to be as light the as fastest, he can because that's yeah. right gonna, but him then, being fast is going to be more valuable than him being weighing five right. more pounds and then just, just ask tutu at well yeah. from february to the to, to training camp, that's when you start putting on the yeah, weight. for sure. You know? Yeah. Get your weight up, homie. I and know you guys have said a lot of positive things. Yeah. Do you guys have anything negative to say? I mean, we can't just can't just say the guy's praises the whole time. Sure, I hit mean, me hit me with we it. We can. What you got? So, I was talking with a good friend of ours last night on the phone who I always like to speak with when it comes to rookie or player evaluation. Mm-hmm. And we were both talking. We both saw the same thing, that he can get knocked off of his route stem early in the route when he's pressed by bigger corners and definitely noticed that when he was playing Clemson when they have those bigger athletes yeah and then did you Clemson. see him absolutely work Clemson a bunch Yo, yeah no I'm not saying I'm, no, no, just, no 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 I totally you. agree with you totally agree I think I think that's I think that's totally yeah, valid no. but at the same time that's one of my concerns with him playing out wide is him getting just bodied by physical corners now I don't know how much he's going to get to get pressed because he does have a pretty good release and he mm-hmm. does have that speed as well too i'm just saying if that's something that it, that is a negative towards him i would put that in the cons uh, I, I i think that's that's fair and I, that, that's going to happen at if with a lot of these college players right for one yeah. they don't see a ton of press man and then when they do you know it's not going to be what they're going to see in the nfl it's something every single wide receiver has to acclimate to i'm not disagreeing with you that that happens to this man you know he's 178 pounds that's going to happen at times but there are times when he does get off that sure absolutely he does play physical and get through it and fight through it all right fine fine i'm 127. referencing that clemson game there's a couple clips and maybe i'll show them where he's going against andrew booth who was like the 42nd pick overall last year to the Fuck, I can't remember. Uh, you go to the Falcons? Uh, maybe. No. Keep going. Anyway, he like works this dude. 
like on several different routes, right? Kind of makes him look silly. Like on one, he just completely separates, and then another, he's like beats him in, in some tight Vikings. coverage. Vikings, that's it. Yep. You know, Clemson does press people a little bit more than your average college yeah. team, but he was also going up against their best corner and and winning and succeeding. So I thought that was definitely of note. Yeah. To see him beat a, a pro corner, you know. At yeah. Clemson. I I think no um, <laughs> I think it goes back for me. Uh, I, there are certainly negatives with this guy, but it, I think, you know, if you're going to, if you're having trouble in that particular game, you have the option of being able to move him around and do different things. So totally you know, if agree. that's, totally if that's agree. a problem, then we can, you know, it's all going to, that's going to be, you know, contingent upon the OC and the, the people who are in the booth to, to make that call and, and, and have that switch be made. Um, but he's capable of doing so. So it's not like this is his, this is his primary role and goal and he fails, you know, X amount of percent at that. Like, I think you can, yeah. you're able to kind of work around that where, you know, I don't know that that's a, a huge worry. I'm not saying it's a huge worry. I'm just saying it's something I want to yeah, make yeah. sure that we're not only just jerking these guys off for 20 minutes. We want to make sure that we're, yeah. hey, look, there, look, there's not every prospect is going to be a perfect prospect. Prospect, right, and I, unless your name is B. John Robinson. So, so I think where, where that starts to come in for me is that's just going to like when, when there's, when I don't think you're as good as the next guy, that's going to result and reflect in the ranking. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And I want it to be known that I feel like we are pretty high on Zay Flowers. So when we come in here and it sounds like we're singing his praises, it's because I fucking like this I think guy you guys are maybe a little bit higher on him than yeah. I am, but I don't think I'm that far behind you. Yeah. I, I think he's, I think he's really talented. I think he's, he's, it was a fun evaluation for the first one. Um, actually started off a little slow on him and then just rewatched and watched a couple different things. And, you know, we have some all 22 that we're fortunate enough to watch. And then, um, you know, there's stuff on YouTube that you can watch and you can catch games where he's targeted and you can go check some of the stuff out for yourself and let us know what you think. Uh, but you know, I, I came away really impressed and, and I think, I think this guy can can sneak into day one draft capital in the real draft. I think I think he's I think he's that good. If he tests really if he tests really well, then I think so. And I, I think I think if he hits that four three number, he's going to go late one. Yeah, I, I was, think I think that number. I, I'm not even sure. low four. I mean, I think four four two is Justin Jefferson. I think yeah. So that's you know yeah. that's. I you know, think he's we, a top. I think he's a top forty-five guy. I don't know if he's going to be at forty-five or if he's going to be at twenty-eight. Yeah, not that the draft capital for him would really mean anything. No, I don't and think at it's the end of the day, late that, enough no, to affect anything. Exactly. No. Do I, do I really care if he's pick thirty-one or pick thirty-four? No, it's the same damn thing. Yeah, I, I'm. I would. I'm just. I'm. That's how I feel about him as a prospect. Like I think he. I think he has a chance to sneak into the back sure. end of day one because I do think he's got offers the, some, the right upside and the right system. Like, you know, if, if th there's plenty of teams that need a wide receiver, um, you know, this perfect giant, like. Sounds a lot like a Darius Tony, but a lot better, <laughs> but a lot better between the years. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of digs ish kind of player. A little digsy. You could do, do a little couple different things. I don't think I'm not saying their games are the same. I'm just saying like yeah. Dayball had that kind of a guy and, and sure. fast athletic can move him around a little bit to get the best matchup. I think any receiver going to the Giants is going to be a coveted player um, just because of how fast a ball turned that around. Um, and, and the, you know, now it yeah. was, there was some folklore around a ball and then it kind of panned out to be good. So I think, you know, any of those guys is, is going to be um, that, that would go there would be great. And th I think he would be a great fit. Um, I got a little comp. I, I kind of see him like a mix of like Tyler Boyd and Rondell Moore. Like he's got it. Like if you could put those two together, right. Cause like, uh, Tyler Boyd's not really like elite athleticism like Rondale, and Rondale wasn't really as polished and as versatile from a route running standpoint as, as Tyler Boyd. And you put them together, kind of seems like Hollywood Brown to me. I don't know if he's that fast. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's that. I don't think he's that. I don't. He's I'm small. not saying he's the exact, exact yeah. same player, but I think he's. They have similar play styles. Uh, I think he and similar sizes. I'm not saying I, they're quite the same speed, but. I think, I think they have similar attributes. Better with the ball in his hands than sure. Marquise is. Marquise is a little soft. Marquise is fast and will get open and can – I love Marquise. Like, I got him high up in my dynasty rankings. Um, so, I'd be stoked if he was Marquise. Um, I think I think if he's you – could, you could throw a little Marquise and, and maybe a little Devonta Smith together. <laughs> 
All right. I, I think I think you know. I know you. I put it in the thread earlier, but it's like Justin Jefferson. Yeah, coming. I didn't read half that shit because I was like trying to trying to take phone calls, and I see I, you you chuckleheads over here going <laughs> twenty texts long. I'm like, yeah, I'm not reading that. Mostly just fucking around, but. You know, I threw Justin Jefferson in there. I know that gets thrown around a lot, but coming out of LSU. I saw that. Coming out of LSU. <laughs> Settle down. Coming out of LSU, there wasn't a person that thought that Justin Jefferson would be the number one wide receiver in the league. So I'm not saying he's Justin Jefferson right now. Especially your name's not Nick Whalen. I'm saying that. No, the, we did say he was like one of the more safer prospects yeah, you could take. I think the way he can move around and the different things he can do, could, could there could move. be a ceiling around that area. Like, like. I think he's fucking re- could develop into being really good. And if he's fast, forget it. Like, and gets day one capital. I mean, I, I think, you know, the sky's the limit for, for Zay flowers. The ceiling is the roof. Um, as far as rookie picks go, I'd, I'd probably throw him, you know, close to the bottom of that first round for rookie yeah. picks. It's yeah. going to come down to whether you want the, want, want one of these running backs and how they grade out in the capital they get in the draft. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, you, and you're talking super flex. Late one. We're typically talking super flex. If not it's super not, flex, then sure. then absolutely. Yeah. Um, probably. Think, yeah. You know, we've only we haven't done. We've only just begun. <laughs> um, so we obviously we're not through a whole bunch of guys. I have a general idea of a lot of these guys, but general idea. Um, but, you know, haven't haven't quite gotten there and, and don't know the ins and outs like I know Zay and, and we're about to do JSN here. Um, and, you know, I've watched decent amount of some some of the other guys but um zay flowers anybody got anything else that they want to throw in on zay flowers a swift crack when his whip it's nail <laughs> well little jack black d. tenacious d pick of destiny yeah i got it it's not the best song in the world it's just a tribute <laughs> Hey, I got one more thing. Y'all need to hit that like and subscribe. Oh, you didn't say it at the beginning. We already left. Nope. They, you got to say it within the first 30 seconds. They I won't know, subscribe. I know. Um, Instead, I like, you're talking I like, about fucking kickers. I like it at the end. We were talking about long snappers. I think it's much better at the end than in the beginning. Jason, well, that's not what the algorithm says, Casey. Jason wants you to do it at the beginning right. and the end. Son of a bitch. You son of I know a what bitch. I like, and I don't like to be hit with that shit in the beginning. Do something for me first. <laughs> Dance, monkey. And then, uh, then maybe I'll subscribe. Yeah, but Sleep you, your chest. Oh, yeah. ye of particular taste over here. Don't represent the general public, I don't yeah. believe. Any podcast that I really like, none of them boys do that shit in the beginning. Are you subscribed to those guys? 100%. Yeah, you hitting subscribe? Yeah, the if, I, button? if I fucking like some shit, I'll subscribe to it. Yeah, I, I don't want to search I for it. I plenty have some podcasts that I subscribe to that I don't listen to, but I make sure to keep their numbers yeah, you up. You keep so. telling me to subscribe, I'm probably not gonna. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Well, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you go over to YouTube and check out this video because there'll be a lot more aesthetics for you to look at, some numbers, some graphics, maybe a little film uh, debating on that. But, subscribe, uh, subscribe, subscribe. Definitely hit me with that five-star review on Spotify or iTunes. Let me get the subby button. Leave yeah. a comment. Tell us what you think about Zay Jones. Are we too high Zay on him? Flowers. Say ah! Zay Flowers. If he could just be, I'm sure we did that somewhere else. If he could be too. fifth year Zay Jones, I didn't hear it, he would be great. I didn't think I did either, but it's probably in there somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. All right, y'all. We appreciate you. Peace.